welcome back to the channel and in this video we are going to talk about Linux user space and kernel space but before that let's talk about some other important aspect as well so the best way to understand an operating system how it works is through abstraction which basically means that you don't need to care about the nitty-gritty details of what's happening behind the scene and just concentrate on your work so Linux system can be thought of being divided into multiple layers of abstraction like so I mean something like a web application or a terminal application or GUI which sits at the top of the layer of abstraction while something like memory or other other hardware uh, sits at the lower level right so if I draw a diagram for you So a Linux system can be represented as three layers. Number the lower layer is the hardware. The middle layer is the kernel layer, which is your core Linux, which is the, basically the core of your Linux system. Or you can say the heart of your Linux system. And the top layer is the user or yeah the user space you can say or the process in fact not user space process all right so hardware like basically it includes your memory disk your network cards and things like that uh, kernel like i said it's the core of the linux system core of the linux system and and uh, it basically resides in memory and the function i mean its function is to tell cpu what to do right and at the top like we said is the processes so it's not user space We're saying processes and processes are basically managed by kernel so like something like a gui application or a ter terminal application so that's a process basically which is running okay? So the code which runs in uh, kernel has unrestricted access to the whole of hardware memory memory cpu right whereas the code which is running as a process um, let me just get rid of this um, process so the code which is running here this has some restricted access like it does not have unrestricted access like kernel so that is why most of the time you have you would have seen that if your kernel crashes it is 99.9% .9 bound to take down your complete system, right? But if a user space application or a process crashes, like suppose a web server crashes or your terminal crashes, the impact is very limited to that particular application only, right? Now let's talk about few functions of kernel uh, in the system. So it basically, I mean, has four major functions to perform. The first one is to determine which process so there will be multiple processes running on a system right so which process gets to access the cpu that's the primary function of a kernel next in primary function is that it keeps track of all the memory so basically kernel sits in the memory and it has a map of memory it creates a map of memory right we'll see why why it does that Another next function is that it acts as an interface between the hardware and the, the processes running. Now basically here I'm talking about the device drivers. So how you connect any device to your Linux system and it's accessible to be used when you are logged in as a user, right? So that's, that's where this function comes in. And the last function is to manage the system calls. So we'll see what system calls are just going forward. And on the system, you can find the Linux kernel under either it's under the boot directory or it's under the root directory and the file name will be something like vm linus, right? So this, I just wanted to tell you what, how, where you can find your kernel. So coming to the actual topic, the kernel and the user space, well, I would say the memory is probably the most important part of hardware and it's broadly divided into two distinct regions uh, which are like in the picture you can see is user space and kernel space 
So the memory cells which are occupied by the kernel and where it sits and executes its functions is called kernel space. And anything apart from that is basically comes under user space. So where the user processes are running, the memory which, uh, which is being used by the user process is user space, right? So coming to system calls. So kernel basically provides an API uh, for these user applications to interact with kernel so suppose uh, on the terminal application when you run a simple command such as ls so in the background this bunch of system calls happening and I'll show you this when we'll do the practical of this uh, when we'll do some hands-on uh, activity so what all system calls are happening so the system calls are basically an API to interact with the kernel. This, these are the API for the user processes running in the user space to interact with the kernel, right? And, and that is how you get an output. Kernel, as you can see, has access to all the hardware which is sitting in the kernel space, right? Okay. Yeah, so like I said, uh, when you run any command uh, or you do any activity in the user space, it's basically you are just asking the kernel to perform that on behalf of you, right? So all the processes, it can be a Docker container running, it can be a simple command which you run, it can be like you created a file. All these things are making system calls behind the scene and they're just asking the kernel to perform that action, particular action on their behalf. Okay, so yeah, uh, just for your information, all this memory management is done by a thing called MMU, which is memory management unit, which is present in actually your CPU. So CPU these days have a dedicated MMU, uh, memory management unit, which is used to basically do all this man memory management. The memory occupied by kernel is actually the physical memory. But the memory which is used by your user process may not be physical. So uh, kernel basically has a thing called virtual memory. So it's basically like a map where each process thinks that it's getting the access to the complete memory. Uh, but uh, basically virtual memory is like an abstraction, right? It's another abstraction where a process thing that it has access to all the memory but behind the scene what uh, kernel is actually doing is creating a map of that virtual memory to the actual physical uh, memory cells so uh, you don't actually don't need to go into that detail uh, so if you want to go and want to learn about uh, how the memory management happens just go and google the kernel memory management and you'll get a very good idea about how kernel does the memory management how what are paging tables what a, so basically this memory address map which is uh, linking a physical or uh, sorry physical memory to the virtual memory is basically called the memory address map or simply in simple terms it's called the page table all right so i think this is it for this video guys i hope you understand now what kernel is what is kernel space what is user space and how they interact with it using system calls so you system calls like i said they're nothing they're just apis and i'll show you what, how what all system calls are being made when you run anything so there's actually a command in linux to do to view all your system calls right okay i think this is it for this video guys please subscribe to my channel before going and so that i can come up with more of these videos every day almost and yeah that's it thank you for watching